Hi there, I'm Greg Wall from Wall Street Video. Firstly, congratulations on the purchase of your new Omega 1200. This video is the first in a series of videos designed to make it easier to get the most out of your new computer. For several years now, Wall Street Video have been and still do provide Omega training in Sydney, Australia. Over this time, we've devised what we now consider to be the fastest and easiest method of learning. Wall Street Video are committed to the Amiga and plan to develop an entire collection of videos that will walk you through all aspects of using your Amiga. Currently, there are two different types of Amiga systems, a disk-based system and a hard drive-based system. For ease of use, we'll be using a hard drive-based system today. A hard drive is an internal storage device. If you have a hard drive in your computer, your workbench disk will have already been installed onto it and when you turn on the computer, it will load up automatically. If not, you will need to insert the disk labelled workbench to start the computer up. When formatting and copying disks, you will need to swap between disks from time to time and follow the screen prompts. If you have a disk based system, you have the option to add a hard drive at a later date. The Amiga is capable of many functions, but first it's important to learn a few basics, and that's the intention of this video. Let's start by taking a look at our new computer. On the back of the A1200 from left to right we have the mouse port. Here we plug in the two button mouse which is used to control events on the screen and to run programs on the hard drive. Next to this we have the joystick port used for games. The next one is labelled disk drive and is used to add an extra disk drive to the system to make copying disks and other tasks easier. The serial port allows you to add an optional piece of hardware called a modem to your computer, which allows your Amiga to communicate with other computers right around the world. The serial port is also used for other add-ons as well, such as the ability to hook up a musical keyboard to the computer. The parallel port is used to add a printer to your computer, so you can get a printout of your compositions, your word processing documents, and even pictures you have drawn with a painting program. Next, we have right and left audio. These two ports allow you to connect your computer to the monitor so you can hear sounds from your Amiga. Depending on the program you're using, the Amiga may talk to you or may, as is the case with most games, allow you to hear music and special sound effects. If you really want to get the most out of sound capabilities of the Amiga, try running a set of two RCA cables from these two ports to the auxiliary port of a hi-fi. Switch it over to the auxiliary on the hi-fi and really see what the Amiga is capable of. The next port labelled video is the standard port to use to hook up your Amiga to a monitor. The port next to this is not used as much and outputs a composite video signal. The one labelled RF modulator is there so you can hook up your Amiga to any TV set that has a UHF receiver. A monitor displays a much better image than a television. If you are using a TV set, you will need to run the supplied cable from the RF modulator of the Amiga to the antenna in of your TV set. Then tune a free channel on your TV into the Amiga signal. The next socket is where you plug in your power using the supplied transformer. On the left hand side of your Amiga is a small slot. This is called a PCMCIA slot, commonly known as a credit card slot or smart card slot. This is one way to add extra memory to the computer. The more memory the computer has, the more tasks it can perform. It can then, for example, run bigger spreadsheets, work on bigger word processing documents and generally do more things. The smart card also has the option to be used as a storage device. You can perform a process called formatting on the card and use it to save information onto it. Make sure, if you purchase one, that it is compatible with your Amiga. This is used to give the computer information not already in its storage or memory. If you go out and purchase a new program, the disk drive allows you to feed this information to the computer to use in its memory or store inside its internal storage device called a hard drive. 
Underneath the A1200 is a trapdoor, which is also used to add extra memory to the computer. This trapdoor can be opened by inserting a screwdriver into the hole. The memory expansion card is then inserted and the trapdoor is then closed. When you turn on the power, the memory will have automatically increased. This unit also has a battery backed up clock in it, which will, when set, keep the correct time on the computer even after you've turned it off. Now let's have a look at the front of the A1200. 